What's your favorite moment playing Sabo? Playing Sabo? Oh, it's coming. Stay tuned. Right. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You kind of said you know them, and I was like, well, who else is coming out? <laughs> I thought you were calling a few more out. All righty then. Well, welcome you guys to Richmond. Doing all right? Yeah. Good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm a little tired. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I come East Coast, I I have a hard time sleeping. You know, because I'm from West Coast, and three hours different. Yeah. It's three hours, right? I think yeah. so. Something like that. Yeah. That's how. That's yeah, how time zones work. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure myself. Um, yeah, uh, you know, it's been a, it's been an exciting weekend. How's the weekend been going for you so far? Good. Yeah, really busy and uh, a lot of people here. A lot of people here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's been over there. Oh my goodness. The, the fans definitely show out here in Richmond for sure. Pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah, for sure, man. Um, it's good to see you again. Last time we got to talk, we got to talk about a lot of cool things. Um, got to talk about martial arts and our both our love for martial arts films. Um, I know that uh, you're a big fan of Jackie Chan, as am I, mm -hmm. and you know he's he's doing the new Karate Kid. Have you heard anything about that? Are you excited about it? Okay, I think I saw I, I saw something about it, but I was like, wait, didn't he already do one? Right, but him and Ralph Macchio now have teamed up, and they're gonna bring a, like a new Karate Kid. All right. And is that something that you're interested in and looking forward to seeing? I mean, that's cool. Well, I felt like last time when he did it. It was. It almost felt like it should have been the Kung Fu Kid. That's what I said. Kung exactly. Kung Fu and not karate. So. Right. I don't know. I mean, I'd love to see Jackie Chan. So I'm. Whatever he does, I don't care. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch him do so. I know, I'll watch him do anything he does, right, man. Yeah. Speaking about martial arts and, and Karate Kid, are you a fan of uh, Cobra Kai at all? Have you seen the series? I, and stuff the like that? first season I re I, I watched and I really liked it, and then uh, the second season I, I ended up getting busy and I, I had to stick with it. Yeah, it's a great series. I mean, and I then know there's they're... like so many things out there, and then I'm like. I really should try to catch up on One Piece, um, you know. <laughs> it's, it's like so much, you know, and, and you kind of have to know what's going on, you know, and, and everywhere else. So when you go in, you kind of have an idea of what to do. So Yeah. yeah. Speaking about One Piece, I know some of the cast here is uh, from the live action is here. Yeah. Have you had a chance to, like, speak with them, meet them? I've only uh, – my well, I watched it, the live action with my son, and uh, – Emily Rudd, right? That's right, she's name. here. Yeah, like we met her in LA, and uh, you know he got to take a picture and everything. That was pretty cool. And that's pretty he was cool. Super nice and sweet. So yeah. How old's your son? He's eight. Okay, so he's all about that life right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's into it. He's watching One Piece. Right. What What about some of the projects that you've done? Have you introduced him to those? And is he into it? Tried, but you know he's not. He's like what a, whatever, Dad. You know, so I'm like, well, eventually you're going to see Sabo and you better like him. So, <laughs> so and my daughter, I tried to get, I might have said this last time, but I tried to get my daughter because she, her friends were watching Demon Slayer. And I was like, oh, you know, OK, she might, she might like it. And then uh, so she wanted to watch it. And I was like, all right. Um, I was like, yeah, let's watch it. And I watched it with her. And then um, she was really into it. She's she's liking it, you know, and having a good time. I wanted to watch the next episode, the next episode, and then you know, Gyu shows up. I'm like, what do you think of that, Tomioka guy, huh? And she's like, yeah, he's all right. <laughs> she's like, I like Nezuka. I'm like, yeah, Nezuka's cool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, anyways, and then I buy her all the Gyu toys. <laughs> You got to. Uh, I was just speaking to this. She's like, uh, can you get me some of the others? <laughs> you got to get them all the toys. I did. I went around. I got, got autographs from everyone. I waited in line, too. I stood in line. That's what's up. And, uh, yeah. That's and really like, cool. What are you doing? I'm like, well, I mean, I feel like I, this is what you do, right? <laughs> right. You want, I want the full experience. I don't yeah. want the fast pass. I want to yeah. do it like everybody else. Yeah. Man, and I get it. Those lines are long. <laughs> and sometimes they're really skinny to fit in the yeah. line. Yeah, yeah. It's like walking in a maze. Although I did, I, it was a long line, but I went through the VIP line. <laughs> so I didn't go, it, was, I, it wasn't as long a wait. And we then sometimes eat. like, I got to get back to my table. So I'm like, hey, can I, can I get in front of you? You got to use like, the perks no. when you can, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
You're a big proponent of uh, speaking about, you know, martial arts and what it's done for your life in terms of mm. turning things around for you. Um, you know, initially you being bullied and then using it to turn into a bully yourself. Yeah. Have you... Um, we talked about that. Wow. We did, yeah. <laughs> Definitely did. And uh, is that something that you instilled on your children as well? Have you put them in martial arts yet or do they show any they interest did, in they it? Did, uh, yeah? they, they did do martial arts. Um, now they're doing other sports, but, you know, I, I, I train them at home. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, martial, it's a great, like we talked about this before as well, martial arts, I, I've been a break dancer for a long time and a gymnast as well. It's a great segue into any type of sport or athletic. Yeah, I mean, or well, anything like that. Anything yeah. where you're using your body to do things, you, you then start to get a sense of uh, your own body mechanics, you know, and, you know, um, and each art is a little bit different. You know, dancing has obviously you're using your arms, you're using your legs, your right. body, um, and then, uh, you know, the more you do those kinds of things, you know, like like stick fighting or knife fighting, then you have a different sense, you know. Boxing, you have a different sense. Jiu-jitsu, then it's like, whoa, when you're connected, it's like, well, I'm really need to know where their legs are and my legs are and how to create. It becomes a chess game, you know. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's it's pretty sweet. Well, you know, you, you have a very physical background, not only with martial arts, but obviously, you know, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, how much of the physical aspect of it translates into your performance as a voice actor. I know that a lot of people use that physicality, you know, mm. in the booth to really bring the characters and the emotions to life. How does that translate for you? Only my understanding of um, what, what I sound like or feel like whenever I have been in a sparring match or fighting or whatever, then I, un I understand like, you know, or what we call, sometimes they call them kias or whatever, you know, you understand the grunts and things that you, the noises that you make when you fight, you know, or when you get hit. And so that's the only time where I really am like, okay, well, I can't just, I, it's hard for me to sit down and do those things, you right. know, because I gotta, I gotta, I'm usually up on my toes if I'm doing that stuff, because that way I can, I can bounce a little bit and my, my diaphragm will drop, you know, um, when I'm doing something so that you can kind of hear uh, what it, should sound like, you know, um, or at least so I feel like I'm doing it the right way. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, you definitely want to give the character as much emotion as possible and make it seem believable. Um, yeah, my concern is for you guys. It's like if, if you, if you, you can tell if somebody's holding back. Like when I scream, I really, I do scream. I don't. There's not like a technique. There are techniques, but I feel like if I'm doing a technique where I'm trying to protect my voice which is probably a smart thing to do. But I feel like if I do that, then you're gonna be like, oh, you're holding back, man, yeah. you know? And so I'd rather you hear it and think, holy crap, that must have hurt, <laughs> you know? <laughs> How did you do that? Um, yeah. Well, um, you know, I definitely want to get the line going and get it started. So if you want to start lining up here. And then um, I just wanted to speak to you, you know, because I know you're part of the uh, Dragon Ball universe, you know, voicing Broly in the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. And obviously we had a tragic moment recently where Akira Toriyama, unfortunately, went on to the other side. And, and I just want to get your insight and, and just hear your thoughts on how it made you feel and also just like what it meant to you just to be part of his world. You know, I mean, I heard, I think uh, somebody brought it to my attention. I didn't even know. Um, and uh, I, I do still feel like an outsider mm. to it, you know. I don't feel like I'm completely in, so it almost felt like I wanted to post something, but at the same time, I felt like I, I, don't, I don't, almost like I don't deserve my place yet, you know. I, I don't feel like I've earned that place yet, but I absolutely respect everything that's I, done. I, it's I a big franchise, uh, you know. I still want to honor the franchise, but at the same time, I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm not on the inside circle yet. I'm still on the outside, what right. I feel like, you know? That's how you feel, yeah. Yeah, so. Okay. But yeah, I, I, I mean, it, I mean, what a legacy, you know? Absolutely, yeah. That he's left, so. For sure, I mean, he's inspired so many different, even just movies. Yeah, yeah, Anime, absolutely. Um, but you know, you, you're definitely a part of it, 100%, and you brought such life, and uh, your, portrayal of Broly in that it was so phenomenal and well done and I think in my opinion as a fan of Dragon Ball I think you were the perfect fit to fill that role so thank you for your time in that and uh, with that said <laughs> let's go ahead and turn things over to the audience now the Q&A um, anyway keep it one question per person please and then we'll get as many as we can in the time allotted and if we don't get a chance to ask now here at the panel of course you can ask Johnny down at his table so hi what's your name and what's your question 
Hi, my name is uh, Brooke, and my question is, how are you able to convey, how are you able to naturally convey such intense emotion in your voice acting? Because my favorite role of yours is Hajime from Danganronpa 2, and when he finds out his Izuru, he just sounds like he's having an entire mental breakdown. I've had mental breakdowns. <laughs> so it helps. It helps to go through drama in your life, you know, and uh, then, then you understand certain emotions. Um, but it also helps when the story is just built well, you know, and, and where the dialogue really kind of lends you, leads you to that place, you know, and a director, of course, you know, is there to kind of help guide you. Um, now that that was, you know, it was just that was just words on a page, and I remember we we flew right through it. Um, so there wasn't um, there weren't a whole lot of breaks, you know. So I wasn't separated from what was going on. So as soon as we were working on it, you know, so I would go from this thing to the next thing, and so I I could feel the the story and my character's journey, you know. And so I was, I was connected. So once I had understood who the character was and I'm going through it, you know, you're just in the ride, you know, and you just kind of go th through it. Um, sometimes when you work on an anime, you, you work on it and then you walk away from it and then you gotta, wait, what happened last time? What, you know? So this one was, you know, I, I don't even know if I spent more than a couple days on it. It was just, you know, just going through it, you know? And I don't know, I, I really think that, as an actor, as any any actor, you know, has has gone through all of us. I guess not even just actors, but everybody's gone through something, you know. And so, just um, figuring out how to get that out is the tricky part, you know. And it helps to have decent dialogue and a, and a good story to kind of take you there. Thank you. What a great question. All right. Hi. What's your name and what's your question? Hey, Johnny's Dennis. Hey. Good to meet again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just obvious question, but uh, what was your favorite Power Ranger? Black, Zeo, or Turbo? Was my favorite Power Ranger of the colors? Because it was the same character. I mean, of your role. It's just like me changing my clothes, you know? <laughs> so it should be like, which outfit was your favorite? <laughs> um, I, I, I always wear black. I don't know. I, I probably would say black, you know? Um, but I did like Zeo because they started to get into my character a little bit more. Um, so, but so, so somewhere between those two, you know, yeah. All right, hi, what's your name and what's your question? Uh, my name's Carrie, and I was just wondering, <clears throat> excuse me, what was it like to get the two calls the, for Trigon Stampede and Thousand Year Blood War? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, well, Trigon, uh, yeah, Trigon, I, I, I remember I heard a rumor that they were working on you know, like a new version of it or something. And I was like, and I didn't know if it was true, but I, and I posted, I think, on Twitter. I was like, if this is true, I am definitely down. And I just wanted to put that out there to whoever was in charge of that thing. And then, uh, I don't know how long after, I saw that they were looking, f they were going to get a whole new voice cast. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm out. <laughs> you know? I saw you tweet about <laughs> yeah, that. I think I did. I was like, dang it. I was, I was bummed. And then uh, I remember they had, I think the date was like, it was like a day after my birthday. It was like the release date was going to be January 7th, and I hadn't heard, it, heard anything. And it was like, man, it's approaching that date. I, I, I was almost, it was probably December and stuff. I, I was like, man, I, I guess I'm really not going to be asked to come back for this. And it was like so really late, like last minute that they're like, you know, I got the text and the phone call. And I was like, hey, I want to see if you'd like to reprise your role. Like, oh, yeah, of course I would. <laughs> Why the heck would you wait so long? You know, um, so I don't know what the the thinking was because they did they did it. It is a very different take on it. It's a really cool take, oh, and the it. neat thing is you you can actually like them both separately because they're so different. So there's enough um, to drag, so. Yeah, yeah. There's enough that kind of like that, that honors the original. The soul is there. Um, I also like that they didn't mess with the original one because then it's like you have that. We have that, and they can't, they're not going to mess with that. But now we got this new interesting take, you know? And so it was really cool. And if you haven't watched it, it's worth checking out for sure. But you do have to stick with it to the, the, that last episode. If you can watch to the last episode, the last episode is, is where it goes like, this is where we're going. And then There's you're like, holy been, cow. There's never going to be a you running through the city screaming. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, I, it, it, was, it, was, it was good. No, I really enjoyed yeah. it. I can't wait to do the next season. I watched it with that and Thousand Year Blood yeah. War. Yeah. Well, Thousand Year Blood War, that one, um, 
I don't even know. I think I just got an email. And they were like, hey, so Bleach is coming back. And I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> um, and then I was like, yes, nice. Because um, I think I was gearing up to do, I was, there's another guy that did like a fan made uh, Bleach, you know, and I, I worked on the first episode with him because he animated a really cool version of it. And we were working on the second one. Um, and he did a really great uh, job at it. Um, but then once that announcement happened, it was like, oh, well, I guess we're not going to do this other one. We're going to do the, the real ones coming back. Um, so, yeah, I was just, just happy to be uh, brought back, of course. Thank yeah, thank you. All right, thank you so much. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name's Wyatt. Uh, you're my favorite voice actor, so thank thanks, you for making man. my childhood awesome. <laughs> thanks uh, for watching. Oh, of course. My question was, uh, what was the defining moment that you knew you wanted to be a voice actor? Oh, man, I don't know. I don't know that I, I thought about, I just wanted to keep acting. Um, after Power Rangers, I couldn't find a, a job on camera. Um, there, at that time, there weren't a whole lot of, like, I just didn't fit the mold. You know, I didn't fit the mold of an Asian guy, you know, which was a lot of times it was like the, it, the description was Chinese guy, and, I, and my agent would send me out, and I'm like, I'm not going to get that, you know, um, or the Caucasian guy. I'm like, I'm not going to get that. Um, so I was just not able to book any jobs, you know, and thankfully the stunt guys from the show wanted to, the Japanese stunt team wanted to shoot their own little action film. They brought me on because I can do my own stunts. Um, but the audio was screwed up, so I had to dub myself, and the producer happened to walk by and hear my voice and was like, hey, you got a good hero voice. Will you come audition for this cartoon I'm doing? And so I went and auditioned for Trigun. I booked that, and I was like, wait a second. I could, I could do this because this doesn't matter what I look like, you know, as long as I can deliver the performance, you know. And so, you know, I, I don't know if that, there was that moment, but it was like a thought in my head, like, I don't know if this is real yet. You know, so I was like doing all these other kinds of jobs, working wherever I can work. You know, I was like uh, uh, trained to be a personal trainer at one point, you know. And so I was like, I don't know if this is going to be sustainable. And then eventually I was just like, I, I just got to commit to it, you know. Otherwise, who knows, right? I mean, if I just, you know, I was going to say something that's probably inappropriate. But, uh, you know, you got to really commit to it, you know. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, it's probably not really inappropriate, but you know, my coach would always say half-ass, and it's not that bad. But I notice there's kids here, and I mean, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't don't go say that. You know. I mean, I guess you could when you get older. <laughs> mom would maybe not like that. And my mom would not like it. Um, but anyways, yeah, you wanna. I just felt like I should just commit to it and do it and full-heartedly. I guess I could have said that, right? Stupid. I know. Sorry. <laughs> You're going to learn that I'm an idiot, okay? The longer I sit here and talk on this microphone, you will realize I'm an idiot. But, uh, but thanks for the question. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Hey, step on up. What's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name is uh, Aaron, and um, I'm a huge Power Rangers fan. Um, one, of my, um, one of my favorite, like, I guess, um, Adam moments was in Power Rangers um, in space. I believe the episode yeah. was Always a Chance. Yeah. What was it like getting the chance to basically mentor, like, the current Black Ranger at the time, uh, Carlos? It was cool, man. I, um, I mean, to be asked to come back was awesome. And uh, I remember that Koichi, who was the, he was the stunt coordinator, the action director, um, when I worked on the show, and he had... I think he was still doing that, but he was, like, really kind of doing a lot of it. He was, like, writing stories, so he kind of co-wrote that one. Eventually, he became an executive producer, but it was a really interesting take on my character, and my character's, like, carrying this backpack around, still has his busted morpher in there. So for me, I'm like, well, that tells a lot about the character, you know, of Adam. He still wants to be a ranger, but he can't, you know. Maybe the other guys left, and they wanted to leave, but Adam didn't want to. And I'm like, I like that, that story. Um, anyway, so I thought it was really fun. It was fun to get in there and, and to work with the, uh, the new cast. Um, I did ask if I, I, my character could die um, because he's got a busted morpher, and that was the danger. You know, I'm like, well, maybe it would be cool if he just sacrificed himself to save everyone. You know, um, they're like, no, we're not going to kill Adam. What are, you, what are you crazy? I'm like, well, I mean, it would be cool. <laughs> I, I, no, I, Johnny, I gonna, we're not. We're not going to um, kill. Lost Galaxy. They did kill off a character. Yeah, right. Eventually, they said. She came back. She came back. Oh, she came back. Oh, I thought. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know. Um, I had a good time though. It was. It was a lot of fun. Um, and I. That was like. I mean, I, we kind of worked with those guys a little bit as we were leaving the show, but um, you know, 
yeah, that episode was was pretty funny. I, I just remember moments in there of the training sequences, and Roger, who played uh, Carlos, like he would like run up the stairs. I felt like he was he was so into what he was doing as a character that it, it, he wasn't thinking about other things, I guess. And as he's running up the stairs, I, I'm like training him, like come on, I'm timing him or something. He's running up the stairs and his his shorts are falling down, <laughs> and I'm like, are we still rolling? You know, and his, his shorts fall down, and he gets up top, and then he's Another moment, he's like talking, and he's like, uh, like tired, and he's like drooling, and I'm like, are you okay, man? I'm like, <laughs> looking around, like, who are these guys? <laughs> like, how would I don't know? Like, he was so into his character. He did a great job. He, it was fun, but he was like so into. He wasn't like realizing the things that were going on. But I kind of liked that. I was like, man, you're really lost in your character. You're not even realizing your pants are falling down, <laughs> and you're drooling all over yourself. Like, I'd be so, much, I'd be like, oh my gosh, cut, please. I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed. My pants fell down, uh, but. <laughs> But he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> it was fun. We, we had a good time on that show. I think all of us did. Well, I mean, I, I certainly did. I can't speak for everyone. I do know there's a couple people that didn't, but I certainly did. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Hey, step on up. What's your name and what's your question? Hi. My name is Andrea. Going back to the voice acting thing, because I have like a undercover desire to want to be a voice actor. <laughs> but we talked about the strenuous sessions earlier. What's mm. your favorite, almost like cool down thing to do? Favorite cool down? Yeah. Usually is I don't talk. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, that's, that's the trick, you know? Um, like if it's, uh, I kind of have, it's, it's like decompressing, you know? I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit more of an introvert to begin with. Um, so it's, it is kind of therapy for me to release a bunch of different emotion, you know? Because I do hold a lot of things in, like a lot of things that might happen in my life, you know? Um, I will just kind of, it just bottles up. And so being able to act on these things, then that's where these things just start to kind of manifest themselves, you know? Um, and it's, it, is, it is like a therapy for me. Um, but then after that, it's, there's, there's a whole lot of time where I'm just, I just don't speak. You know, I'm just uh, in, in my own space, you know? Your kids leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, my kids can interrupt me anytime they want. There's not any kind of, you can't interrupt me, you know? Um, the only time they can't is if I have like the red light on and I'm recording, you know. But uh, you, they can interrupt me anytime. Yeah. Thank yeah. Of course. All right. Hi. Step on up. What's your name and what's your question? Hi. My name is Rebecca, and my question is back to the Mighty Morphin. Uh, was there any like practical jokes that either you played or one of the cast members played on each other? I mean, Jason Frank was a big prankster. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know that I really played a bunch of pranks on people because I, I say so the thing with Jason is he, he didn't feel bad about doing things, <laughs> you know. So so and, and I may may have instigated a few things, you know. Like I would say something and then I, you just I'd see him act on it, you know. I'm like, man, all right, you you're gonna get in trouble. Um, but then a lot of times we would all get in trouble, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there was there were plenty of times where pranks were pulled. I'm I'm filtering through my head which ones I can talk about, <laughs> but <laughs> I can't think of any. <laughs> Hang on, I know, there are some. There are definitely some um, pranks. Let's see. Uh, I mean, I could talk about this. I talk about this all the time, but. Uh, well, I have to skip ahead. So there's, we were doing tree flips in Australia, and he f blamed me for not like spotting him, but it was really his fault, and he fell. He scratched his face. Anyway, so we're shooting the movie in Australia, and uh, I, I don't remember how much. It was like maybe a few, like maybe the week after or so, we were shooting in this place that was like uh, not a desert, but it was, it was kind of a desert to the ocean. And we're in the van. It's uh, this, this girl is driving, and there's Jason and me, and the girls were in the back, and the window was open, and I was just doing that thing where you can go, you know, I'm doing that. Because we're, we're flying through this desert to get to the location. And uh, for whatever reason, I said out loud, I was like, ah, it'd be cool if I climbed out of the car and got on the roof <laughs> and then climbed in on the other side. And, uh, and I'm young, and I'm stupid, so don't ever do this, kids. Um, and uh, Jason was like, nah, you won't do it. I was, I was like, yeah, man, I know. I mean, we're going 50 miles an hour. I'll get out of this car, get on the roof like Teen Wolf, and then climb in on the other side. And then uh, he was like, nah, you're chicken. 
I know. Back then, that was a big deal. Um, and I was like, no, I'm the frog. I climbed out the window of this 50-mile-an-hour vehicle, and I get up on the roof. And like I said, inside the car, you can do that thing where it feels like cotton, or you're like, eh, this, right? But when you're on top of a roof of a moving vehicle going 50 miles an hour, you can't see anything. It's in the desert. It's like dust, and it's like, <laughs> you know? And that's when I realized, wait, I can die. <laughs> And then so I, I pull myself over so I could at least finish this dare that I put myself in. And as I get to that window, um, suddenly the car starts to swerve, right? I'm like, holy cow. And so that like, stretch out, you know, and I'm hanging on. And I'm like, dude, she's trying to kill me. And then I pull myself forward to look through the windshield. And she's like freaked out because Jason Frank is yanking at the wheel, <laughs> you know, like trying to throw me from the vehicle. Um, and because of the tree flip thing, right? So he's trying to like throw me and she's like trying to fight him off. She starts hitting him. And I get over there and I try to get in and he starts rolling up the window. Um, she doesn't slow down at all. She just keeps going. Um, eventually she starts hitting him and then he opens it and lets me climb back in. And then, so, and I lived. I lived, <laughs> surprisingly. So there's one prank. It's, that's a safe one I can talk about. Safe one. Mission Impossible. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hey, my name's Jeff, and I got a question. You've done so many, like, action stars. What was it like to do Saku from Beck? Oh, from Beck? Yeah. Beck, okay, so Beck is an older anime, um, and it, it was a band. He was the drummer. Um, and uh, that was awesome because, you know, I had a band and, and a lot of their kind of experiences, like I've, I've felt like it felt like, ah, this is, I finally get to see an anime or a story that's kind of like what it's like to be in a band. And that's super cool. Um, and I knew a lot of other bands. So a lot of the things that were happening in there, I was like, yeah, this, yeah, this is believable to me. Um, but uh, Saku was a great character. I really liked him. He was like a good buddy friend, you know, the drummer. Didn't really open his eyes. Um, and drummers are a little bit different, <laughs> you know. But, uh, yeah, it was cool. I, I, I loved it. You know, I really wish that we got to see them tour in the U.S. You know, I think the manga they went, went on to there. But, um, yeah, it was super cool. I loved it. And the box set is really sweet. Did you get that, the yeah, amp? The yeah, you did. Okay, great, yeah. It's pretty cool, yeah. I love those. They're more like, I guess they're slice of life kind of things, right? Yeah. Those are cool. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Hey, what's your name and what's your question? My name is Sean, and your performance as Lelouch and Code Geass is incredible. You have one of the all-time great evil laughs. <laughs> what you. is your secret? Uh, I don't know. Um, I remember earlier on that one was kind of tricky for me. Because I didn't understand the, at, when he was zero, it was like, what I was told from, there was notes given to us from the Japanese director that was, just, that it was like more Phantom of the Opera, you know? And I'm like, what? And so, he's the protagonist, but he's the, he's kind of an ad, antagonist, you know? He's like an anti-hero, but almost villainous. Um, and so I was a little confused because I wouldn't be like, I'm going to kill you, you know? I'd be like, hey, you want some candy? Bah, you know? Um, <laughs> so my thought process was wrong, and then as they talked about it more and we got into the scenes a bit more, then I was like, ah, okay, this is just what it is. He is over the top as zero, you know? And I'm like, well, what is that like? And so that really was me just putting on the performance of that character. Um, and then there were, but there were certain things that I understood, like, his relationship with Nanali and his friends and then Shirley and all those things. Once things like that started happening, then I'm like, I can see where he's going. He's getting into this dark place. Um, and so, yeah, it was, real, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I don't know. I just committed to it, you know. Um, and then, I mean, you've seen the ending of it, right? I mean, what a great ending to that. So to the second season, I'm talking about the two seasons and the end of that was excellent because it, it, it's like, man, he's a chess player and he's playing a few moves ahead of everyone, you know, and I'll, I really love that kind of, like, thing. You're like, why is he doing this? And then you find out, you know. Um, so, yeah, super cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching that. All right. Hey, step on up. What's your name and what's your question? Uh, my name is Donovan, and my question is, 
Um, you've got quite a storied legacy. You've been doing this stuff, obviously, for quite some time. Um, a lot of other voice actors end up in a director's chair behind the boards and stuff like that. Have you found yourself in a position where you've had someone who you might consider to be a peer in that position? And have you noticed if there's any sort of difference in the way that they offer direction when they've been someone recording lines versus someone who's never recorded lines? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, sometimes they completely understand. Um, and sometimes they want to give you what they think you should do, you know? Um, so you kind of find that, like, well, you're the director, so you're really the boss. But I, f from my understanding, my through line is this, and I'm supposed to get to that place, and I feel like if I'm here, I can build to that place, you know? Like, so then you kind of have to come to an agreement, and then you balance it out. It just depends, you know, on if the person is, and I find most of the time they are, they're completely understanding and, and give you your chance to do things and then we'll be like well this is what i think if you're doing this and then they kind of they they can they can explain things a little better from their perspective also you do have to trust the director because you haven't watched all the episodes you don't know the scripts or the story overall you're coming in you maybe know your character and your arc um but you really do have to trust the directors which i always do but sometimes i put my foot down i'm like i don't see it that way <laughs> um not always, but uh, in most cases, it's great. And I actually do prefer the person to be, at least have a good, or at least be a writer as well, you know, because then they have a better understanding. I think it's good to know all of it, though, you know. If you're an actor that is also doing writing and understands how to write a story, you're understanding your backstories and where you're coming from, where you're going, you know, your arc, where you're going to end up, so how to get to that place and how to build it naturally. And the director has to do that for all the characters. You know, like this scene, what is the most important thing we gather from this scene, you know? And so it's just uh, balance, you know, with everyone. Thanks, man. Yeah, great question. All right, hey, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, uh, my name is Trinity. Uh, so I played the Persona 4 game. Uh, golden. I also watched the Persona 4 anime in dub. My question for you is, in the game, you are mostly silent. Like, you know, you voice your game lines, you say Persona. What was it like making that transition to the anime list, like, as a fully voiced, like, fully realized main character? Yeah, it was, uh, well, first off, with Persona 4, I didn't know that I was going to be the protagonist. I only thought I was doing Adachi. So, and I wasn't told ahead of time. So I'm working on Adachi, and I, I only thought I was doing one character. And so I didn't think about my range. And I was like, I'm just going to do whatever feels right, you know. Um, and then towards the end of wrapping up Adachi, they were like, all right, as soon as we're done with this, we're going to go through and you're going to do the protagonist. And that's when I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what does he sound like? Is it the same tone? Is, like, is, it, is it the same actor? No. I'm like, okay, so he has to be different. But they're like, nah, it's just call out, so. So you maybe you just pitch them down, gruff them up a little bit, and you'll be fine. So I did that. And it was fine. Mm -hmm. Until the anime came out. <laughs> you know, and then I'm like, wait a second. It's going to sound like I'm talking to myself. Um, so we did, um, we did, I, at first I was like, can I just voice Adachi and you hire somebody else? And they're like, no. Uh, and I was like, all right, well, you know, let me do this character first, and then we'll go back through the episode and do the other character. That way I can, just, I can really separate them. And then we would go back through and, and watch the scene, and then I'd go, I, I got to take him this way, and I got to take him this way. Um, but the anime is, 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 he's a different character, you know? And so his, I think his persona, I, I didn't mean to use that word, but I think his, <laughs> his personality is different. You know, and, and so, or you, you feel a different sense of who he is. Like some people say he's a Chad, you know. Um, but, uh, and I do, I think he's kind of a silly character in the anime, which made it pretty fun. Um, but that was really when I really had to think about separating the voices a bit more. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. All right, hi, step on up. What's your name and what's your question? Hey man, thank you. Uh, my name is Johnny, and I grew up in a ballet studio your um, name is Johnny? My name is Johnny. Oh, sweet. I thought you were pulling a prank on me. No, nah, man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I grew up in a ballet studio, and when I put together movements that I learned from a very young age, I assume you started martial arts at a very young age, mm. it kind of feels like a language. Do you ever mm. feel like when you're sparring or when you're doing a scene even with martial arts, do you ever feel like there's a language there? Oh, absolutely. There's, there are times when I see things that a director can't see. Like in an anime, a lot of times um, 
they can just play, some studios know this, they could just play me the action and I could chase it and I could see it. And I'm like, well, I, I could see he's doing a jump spinning cr crescent and he does like a sweep and he's followed up with two and he's got a couple blocks like, and I'm, I'm going through the choreography. And I could see it. And so I'm like, okay, I'm good to go. And I could just do it on the fly. I don't really need to see it ahead of time. Um, but sometimes we'll do it, and a, and a director was like, oh, hang on a second. Can we, let, let me go back through that. And I'm like, well, I got it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you can just let me go, and then you can you know, adjust it later. But I know what's going on. But then some director's like, well, I need to understand it. I'm like, okay. And then so we end up spending extra time because the director doesn't understand the language. Like, I understand the language, you know. And I'm like, no, I, okay. So I'll, I'll let you catch up to understanding. And sometimes they're like, well, let, let's just get the first two moves. And I'm like, just leave it open. Leave it open and let me chase it. And then we could pick up something if you want. But we're going to spend a lot of time going back through. If they, and you got like 25 moves in this thing. Let me just roll through. And then, you know, if you don't like it, then that's that. But, yeah, absolutely. There are plenty of times where I feel that way. And in, in martial arts, you feel that way too, you know. Um, everyone, it's like... And sometimes somebody's language is more advanced than yours, your understanding of it, too, you know? And I'm like, oh, he caught me. He's reading me now, you know? And you can read my, my te like, I'm telegraphing somehow. And then it's like, all right, well, how do I adjust that? How do I change my language so he doesn't understand what I'm about to do? Or how can I trick him by making him think this is what I'm actually saying when I'm actually going to kick him in the groin? You know, so it's like different things like that, you know? And so, but, uh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Thank you, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, hi. What is your name and what is your question? Um, my name's Autumn, and <laughs> my question is, do you have like a favorite or most memorable moment either from working in the industry or on the job or just at a con in general? I Well, there's a whole lot of great moments, you know. Uh, a lot of times they do happen at a convention um, where I get to see, because um, I'm in a booth, you know, and, and and, and um, I turn all the lights off. All that's on is either my screen or the script. And uh, I just focus on what's there, you know? Um, and there's not like the director doesn't go like, yay, good job, that was fantastic. And most times they're like, all right, next, next scene or whatever, right? And you're just moving on because you have time, right? And you got to get through a certain amount by a certain uh, deadline or whatever. And so uh, you don't get the, re there's no reward. It's not like I'm out on stage and getting an applause. So when I come to a convention, this is where I find out, ah, Great, okay, Trigun Stampede resonated with fans, you know, and then I'm like, this is awesome, okay. So they're not angry that, that where we took the character, even though it's slightly different, they, they're still on board. So this is, this is really where I get to see it and go like, ah, you know, this, this is kind of, it's, it's almost like the reward, because I, I get to meet everyone and talk, well, what did you think about this, you know, or like, have you seen, you know, have you read the manga, you know, and it's like, because I've read the manga now, and I know what's going to happen to you. Uh, you know, and that's that's always fun to find out too. You know, and sometimes that's like Demon Slayer. That was an accident. I just wanted to know if my character was coming back, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I found out too much. Now I have to read it. Um, yeah. So I don't know a specific moment, but it, always at a convention, there's always great moments. You know, um, I I mean, just the other day, I, there's a I saw a kid. He was in line, and his sister was getting something, and he's like, "Can I get something?" And she's like, "No." Um, and then I heard that, and then I could see his face, you know, I'm like, don't worry, I'll take care of you when you get up here, and then he got here, I signed her thing, and then, uh, and he was so sad, because he, he wasn't going to get anything, I was like, well, what are you into, what do you like, one piece, all right, and then I got him a piece, and I signed it for him, he was like, but I don't have any money, I'm like, well, take it, I don't care, I want you to be happy, you know, and that, to me, is a, a, that's like what I, no, don't, don't applaud me, please, I mean, it's, no, it's like that. It that rewarded me, you know. That that made me feel good. So it was a bit selfish at the same time, but I, it does make me happy to see you guys happy. It really does. I mean, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you guys. So you need to know that I really appreciate you guys. I, I don't. I in my head, I don't deserve any of this. So you guys just showing up is awesome. And I, I again, just I just appreciate you coming. Maybe you just want the seat because you don't want to stand up anymore. <laughs> but I appreciate you staying and not taking off. But, uh, yeah, thank you, guys. I really do appreciate you. Thank you. You're doing a great job. All right, so just so you know, we have about five minutes left, so let's try to lightning round these questions and answers as quickly as possible so we can make sure everybody gets to ask their questions. So here we go, as quick as you can. What's your name and your question? Hello, how are you? Uh, my name is Amir Nasiri, and I am an aspiring voice actor. And one of my largest questions is, 
as this industry grows and is changing, as you know, what is your number one piece of advice to voice actors or people looking to engage themselves within the voiceover industry? I don't know. I get this. I get this a lot. Um, and it's, uh, it's a great question. I'm not saying it's not a great question. Um, but because it keeps changing, I don't know the right answer, you know? Um, I, I could say a few things, and I will. Like, I would say, if you aren't already trying to study acting, definitely study acting and try to get some experience acting. Um, and maybe not, not, you know, targeting just voiceover, but just learn how to act and understand acting and understanding how to break down your character, you know, and, and build that through line of your character. And then I'd also say, learn to write, because writing is gonna help you in creating your character, because sometimes you won't get the backstory, you know, and then you'll just have to like, make something up in your head so that you can believe yourself doing that, you know? Um, I would say those two things, and then if you really want to do voiceover, find someone like Stephen Bloom who teaches, you know, maybe take a class or two with him and just, because then it's like being a martial artist, right? If you're like, hey, what should I do as a martial artist? And I'm like, I wouldn't know until we start training together, you know? Then I could be like, well, your punches are weak, you know, or you, I, I can read everything, you're telegraphing. So I don't know where you should start, that's where someone, if you do take a class, you know, in a, if you specific to voiceover, then they can tell you, you're weak in this area, you're strong in this area, so work on this. Um, so for me, it would just be a blanket, like, well, just start acting, maybe find a coach or something like that. I'd also say, if you're writing, try, and you're not an artist, try to find an artist, you know, and then, because, like, you can create your own material, you know, you can find an artist that loves to do art and wants to create a thing, and you're like, well, hey, I love stories, let's make something. And then you can, you know, do a motion comic and throw it up on YouTube and see if that connects with people, and then maybe that becomes a thing. Um, yeah, I would just follow your passion and, and just, you just keep your eyes open, you know. I know it's kind of strange advice. I don't, I don't really know if, I don't, I don't really have a specific I can give you. So much. Have a great day. Thank you. All right, we got two minutes left. Here we go. Lightning round. Hey, uh, my name is Justin. Um, huge Devil May Cry fan. Four and five, especially. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, what was it like to return to Nero's role after that awful? It was. Uh, yeah. Well, it was awesome. <laughs> I thought for sure when they did the other, the reboot, that we were done for. But because that didn't resonate with the fans, they they released that special edition, and fans were like, "Okay, yeah, we like this one." Um, and then so. And I didn't even know, because me and Ruben, who did uh, Dante, we were working on something else in Japan, doing some motion capture, and I just took a picture with him. And uh, that pitch, I posted, I was like, hey, you know. Everyone thought it was DMC5. And they were like, you know, I, uh, I got in trouble. And they're like, you gotta take that down. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even take a picture. And I, so I can't take pictures with Dan Southworth or Ruben outside of anything else because, and post it, because the fans will say, oh, you guys doing DMC6? I'm like, well, no, we're just friends. You know, can we not take <laughs> pictures with each other? But yeah, so, uh, you know, I was absolutely happy because I did, with DMC4, they, they hinted at the story, but they didn't give you all the story. And so I'm glad that we got to go back into five and get into that real quick. So thank you. I know we're probably running out of time. Let's see if I can do these faster. Real quick, you don't even have to say your name. Just what's your question? What's your favorite moment playing Sabo? Playing Sabo? Oh, it's coming. Stay tuned. All right. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. I'm a manga reader. I have a feeling I'm... All right. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank you. Question, go. What's your favorite more obscure, less known uh, roles that you've done? Favorite obscure? Kibo, Wolfstrain. Awesome. Go. Uh, favorite moment playing Canada in the... Ah, uh, uh, shouting Tetsuo. That's what I thought. You know? <laughs> yeah. There's, oh, right. of course, a lot of cool animated moments, like the bike slide. Oh, yeah. Uh, just to fish it off, could we maybe get a Bankai? Yeah, you know, my voice is really messed up right now, but I'll, I'll definitely try to get one for you. Ready? Bankai! Thank you, guys. Johnny Young Bosch, everyone. Go visit him down at his table. He'll be here for the rest of the weekend.